Hi, it's great to see you today. It's um, Friday the 19th of February and as you can see, I'm back in my usual perch. Got back about, actually I was heading to be back about um, 20 past nine. And then as you came north, what were some of these guys thinking with road closures? Came up the A19, because I know there's road works on the A1. Came up there, up to the A1231 at Sunderland. A1, the A19 north was closed. It pushes you to the A1. Went to the A1, and then the A1 was closed for, for three junctions. So it took me 40 mi it took me an hour to do what normally would have done about 20 minutes. It's like, how crazy is that? Um, anyway, um, planners, take, if any planners are listening to this, road planners and road works and things, take note. I was not happy. Anyway, I got home about 10 to 10 last night and uh, had a good night's sleep. Here I've got my cup of coffee. Here we go. Here, ready to go, which is good. Take a slurp. Anyway, so it's good to see you today. Oh, I need to wipe my face. Oh, I dribble, don't I? Dear me. Anyway, so it's good to see you again. Um, as you know, we're doing these daily devotions. We're in the book of James. Again, just to say, if you, you know, if you want to receive these kind of automatically and stuff, why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel and it'll come up on your device. It will show, you know, it will show up when there's a video, comes on, does it on Karen's tablet. So, um, so yeah, it's good. I'd like to say hello to everyone who's, who's watching and uh, everyone commenting and, and different things, which is great as well. So it's good. Today, uh, we're in James chapter four, we're in verse five, and I'm looking at this verse and it's like, Carl, oh, I'm thinking, flipping heck, what, is, what does that mean? What does that, what does that really mean? And I've looked at several different versions of what it says, and I'm gonna read you two versions this morning, one from the New American Standard Version, and one from the NIV, which both say similar kind of things. Uh, you'd hope they would say similar kind of stuff, but sli slightly different kind of phraseology. And this is what it says this, it's on the back of, um, so it's the back of verses three, four, you know, three and four, which is talking about you are an adulterous people because you know you, you're filled with this envy and jealousy and da 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 da. da. Um, you know you don't get the things you want because you don't ask, um, and even if we do ask, you've asked because you've got the wrong motives in you. And then it says this in verse five: Or do you think that the Scripture says to no purpose he jealously desires a spirit whom he has made to dwell within us? Or in the NIV it says this, or do you think that scripture says, without reason he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us. Well, we know the first thing is this, we know that God is a jealous God, not because, not because he's um, a tyrant, not because of anything else, but um, he, he desires, he desires above all things a covenant, relationship with us and it is it, the bible speaks about it as being like a marriage you know you can't i always remember when it says about charles uh charles, prince charles and diana and camilla and they said there was and she said there were three people in that marriage and having three people in a marriage it listen tell you this it doesn't work it doesn't work it can never work because there are jealousies and there's all these kind of things and what god is saying is this that he he wants he 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 wants a, a heart, and he's um, the Bible says that he's coming. He's coming back for his bride, which is we are the bride. He is the bridegroom, and he loves and he desires us. And then, in fact, actually, when you're looking at the Ten Commandments, he says that he is. You know, he says, "I am a jealous God. I am a jealous God. You sh you should have no other gods beside me." And one of the reasons for that is because I, when we have when we have when we follow idols, when we have idolatry in our lives. It causes all kinds of mayhem when we go after other stuff, particularly when we go after the things of this world, when we go after money or, or, or relationships or all this. If we go after those things, this causes us massive problems in our lives because we become incredibly selfish we, we, and we, we become very self-centred, self self-oriented and, and fulfilling, fulfilling ourselves, our own physical needs. And this is what James is talking about here in the earlier verses here. He said, like, you don't you don't want these things because you know you have you asked you you don't have because you haven't asked, but then even you do is because you want these things, but it's not because 
for any good reason. You just want to be um, fulfill yourself. It's a, it's just selfishness. And you see, this is the thing about with idolatry. You, it just causes us to be selfish. We have to remember that God is a jealous God. He's put his Holy Spirit within us so that we would serve him and we would serve him ho um, wholeheartedly. And I remember Anne Moore gave a word in the church quite a few years ago. And it's, you know, it's not many words I kind of remember. And, but it was just, and I don't remember all of the stuff, but she said, God wants us to be wholehearted <clears throat> and wholehearted for him, wholehearted for him. Not running after other stuff, not running after this, that and the other, but wholehearted for him because he is a jealous God. And he's, called, he's put his spirit within us to cause us to just to follow him. And that's such an important thing. He's given us his Holy Spirit so that to help us to be the people he's called us to be. Because remember, it does say about God, you know, God as well is a God of love. 1 John 4, it tells us that God is love. That That is his nature that is who he is and so this jealousy this the that says god is i'm a jealous god is not a bad thing is a it's a good thing because you have to look at the whole context of god of who he is and as a whole what is his nature god is good god is a god of love so let's as the people of god let's just take a grip of ourselves today Let's be wholehearted for God. Let's not get distracted by the things of this world. Let's not get distracted by things that kind of pull us away from the, the purposes and the, and, the, and the things that God has called us to do. But let's just be, uh, uh, as it says in Hebrews 12, let's run the race with perseverance. Let's kind of get focused in. Let's get into training. Let's get into discipline. Yes, discipline. You need some discipline, boys and girls. Discipline, wholehearted, following God. Seeking his way, seeking the things that he wants to because he is good. He is a God of love. He has plans. He has purpose for you. He has, a, you know, and, um, and these things that only you can do, only you can do. But we need to have that right attitude of wholeheartedness to, to him, to, to follow him. And because he is a jealous God. And after all, the end of, this, of all these things, he's given us his Holy Spirit to help us within us. And, you know, that is an amazing thing. You're not in this on your own. We're in this A together as brothers and sisters, uh, people in the church, the ecclesia. But as well, you have God has given you a deposit of his Holy Spirit within you right now to help you to, to, to fulfill the plans and purposes he has for you. So, yes, we just say more, Lord. We want to increase in your Holy Spirit in us right now. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Listen, hope you have a great day. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you again tomorrow in Jesus name. Amen.